Thank you very much. Uh, the next presentation is by Thomas Heurung by Siemens ADA. Please join me on stage. So, thank you and good morning. Thank you for the kind introduction. It's my pleasure to present here this morning. Uh, my name is Thomas Heurung. I'm the technical director for Siemens EDA, formerly known as Mentor Graphics. Um, and I will talk about taking the risk out of risk five in a more profound way so that you don't end up with just a dash five, but a proper risk five implementation. Risk five creates a ton of opportunities, but also a number of challenges that need to be addressed. It is an open architecture and as such provides you with a specification and allows you to pick independent implementations, which is good news. On the other side, it does not contain implementation itself and you need to work with specifications. Specifications are open for interpretations. Um, Risk V allows you to have a, a wide selection of IP implementations that you can use to optimize for your use cases. But on the other hand, you need to find a way to validate suitability of the IP for the application you have in mind. Risk V provides you with an ability to create bespoke and optimized solutions based on your application. But again, you need to find a way to effectively verify any of the changes that you implement. Last but not least, a common software ecosystem certainly has a lot of benefits. But again, you need to make sure that you need to port and validate existing software. So in a nutshell, as one of my favorite uh, philosoph philosophers has said, with great risk flexibility comes great responsibility. The challenge isn't really about building a new processor. Whilst it is hard, it can be done by relatively small design teams. This is a reason why there's a lot of processor IPs out in the wild. But it typically is only in a very, very, very specific specification. That's basically a very narrow field of use, such as the round cow in a vacuum. For those of you who don't know the theoretical physicist joke about the round cow in a vacuum, please go and see me in the coffee break. It becomes way harder if you leave the round cow in a vacuum space and go into something that's more broad in application, where you need to verify that your processor works in specific configurations and for fixed tasks. Because verification doesn't necessarily scale linearly with a complexity. So that's difficult. What's more difficult, the hardest job, is if you try to make it much broader in application, scaling to work under a variety of conditions, and where you need to build a robust software infrastructure. That typically requires specialized tools, teams, and a lot of resources. Either way, end-to-end -end verification and verification is key to a scalable success to any SOC design, even when you're using proven IP today. Siemens has been supporting the RISC-V ecosystem uh, and will continue to do so. We have been participating and contributed to the definition of the standards. We are participating in industry initiatives. We're working with IP providers. We're working with software infrastructure. We have test, test and integration and we are contributing to open source projects. From our perspective, the RISC-V ecosystem and developing such an ecosystem is good news for everybody. Um, we are not a processor IP provider, but we believe that a RISC-V ecosystem will grow the market for all of us. So a rising tide lifts all the boats, as one of my colleagues loves to say. As you can see on this longer-term roadmap, we have been contributing, uh, in this case through Altasoc, for many years to define the standards, delivering solutions to RISC-V. Here in the case of RISC-V um, trace encoders, um, the difference that has changed, or the thing that has changed in the mid of 2020 when Siemens has bought Altasoc, we have changed the name 
of the software, which is now running under the umbrella brand of Tessent as Tessent Embedded Analytics. But we continue to invest resources, we continue to support the standard, we continue to work on development supporting the RISC-V standard. Enabling high-quality processes is a challenge that requires to look at this from multiple different uh, uh, viewpoints. Technology, you need to have processes verified, not just the core, but also the integration itself. You need to be involved with the industry. Um, you understand what is needed by the different market areas, what is needed by individual players. And this is the reason why we are participating, actively participating in RISC-V International, the Open Software Group, and also participating in initiatives such as Scale for Edge. Obviously, we are supporting the user community and um, providing commercial solutions and aiding with the adoption of the solutions for these applications. One good example for our contribution and participation in industrial um, initiatives is the Tristan Consortium Overview. It's basically a partnership with a number of different industry partners intending or intended to drive the RISC-V adoption uh, in, in ecosystem in Europe. When you look at the number of players in this, on this sheet here, you see it's a fairly broad variety of different um, players from tier ones in the automotive space, semiconductor vendors, um, academia, and so on and so forth. So it is a fairly broad industry partnership. Um, the intention is to provide predictable solutions for RISC-V adoption and have this with a very broad applicability. The Tristan project itself, we're contributing a high-level synthesis flow that allows you to generate custom instructions by using a high-level synthesis flow, taking C code and turning this into a custom instruction directly. And on the other hand, we are, have been putting together an AI-enhanced verification framework for RISC-V that gathers all type of information from source code to the device under test verification plans, creates a semantic layer and a knowledge graph and builds applications on top of that. One of those applications is helping you to identify when you just checked in codes into your GitHub, for example, um, those lines of codes are or can be tested by the following test vectors with the highest level of priority based on an AI mechanism built into this. So this is the kind of contribution in, in Tristan program. For more information, I really would like to point you to the Siemens colleagues at the Tristan booth. They will answer those questions in way more detail than time permits here. When you look at the life cycle of uh, verification for RISC-V, then we typically start with the exploration where you have different methods at your hands. One way is actually using virtual platforms, using embedded software for architecture exploration, where you're targeting your hardware architecture in the best, best, best possible way for your intended application. That typically has the biggest bang for the buck. Functional verification as a next step is instrumental to make sure that things are working and will deliver the intended outcome. And the typical means for that are simulation, formal verification, and static analysis. System integration as a next step, emulation prototyping, as typical and known tools in the industry today for any large-scale integration today. Verification IP, yet and again, highlights another benefit of a standard because if you have a standard, you can buy verification IP somewhere and make sure that you have a third party looking at your IP and make sure that it operates correctly. Next step is software bring up. Typically, we see our customers using prototyping and running embedded analytics to get the debug data that you need to actually bring up your software. And last but not least on this life cycle, here is in-life monitoring, where you need embedded analytics to actually drive data out of your system whilst it is actually running in the field. Big point here is that any change that you add to even a production proven processor requires revalidation all the time. So if you want to avoid unintended consequences, you need to make sure that your validation process is sound and robust.
Typically, what's being used here is a combination of multiple different approaches to give the maximum confidence in your design with respect to correctness and also performance through the whole life cycle of the design phase. To achieve that, you typically need to have three things in mind. One is obviously speed. This needs to be quick enough. So you need to have optimized engines. You need to find RTL issues as soon as possible, not just at the very end of the project. You need to accelerate your coverage closure. And if you find bugs, you need to find them quickly and be able to fix them quickly. This basically needs a high level of automation. You don't want to write functional coverage models manually. This needs to be generated. You need to extract detailed information from your microarchitecture automatically and generate assertions automatically. This is a lot of things that can be simplified through automation here. In the end, what you want to have is an exhaustive and a complete verification with 100% functional coverage, unbounded proofs, and with as much documentation as required. Two examples for methodologies you can use here. I'm just picking two out of this here. One is formal verification, which is reflected on the left-hand side of the graph. We can see this up here. Um, formal verification, whilst it introduces a slightly different verification paradigm, it allows you to find issues way earlier in the flow than the traditional methods typically do. So strongly recommended, and we see a strong move towards more formal verification. Also, and not only, but also in the RISC-V area. On the right-hand side of that graph here, uh, we see tools for uh, software left shift. So you can run um, your production software on hardware. So you can run your models, use them with the real software as test vectors to make sure that you have a thorough verification by using software shift left, executing your production software earlier. I already indicated this within the context of the Tristan project. High-level synthesis is really a good way to actually implement uh, software functionality that you have already in C code, for example, and implement them in hardware. In particular, RISC-V gives you the option of using this for custom instructions in a, in a great and highly efficient way. So offloading some of those compute-intensive operations really is a big thing. Um, to achieve greater performance, as we heard just from the previous speaker from Semi Dynamics. So this was clearly demonstrated there. Um, verification needs to be monitoring the, the interconnect with the, um, with the rest of the system. So this is why our test and embedded analytics ensures that you can ensure, sorry, that you can validate through the whole life cycle. Our Tessent Enhanced Trace Encoder has been developed right from the get-go, targeting RISC-V applications, and has been informed and defined the standard. And so this is a very, very valuable tool in this area. So last challenge I want to bring to your attention here is really the design productivity gap that we come to observe. This is real. As designs are growing bigger and bigger, um, the skill sets that are required to actually drive transistor designs are getting more scarce, not just because of the more demand we see in the market, but also because less students actually pick up those, those studies. So there's a, a resource scarcity showing up in the market. Um, whilst we need to fight the resource scarcity on one hand, but we need to also provide tools to the engineers to be more efficient. Our experience with that is that machine learning, AI tools are a suitable tool to compensate for that quite a, in a good way. Um, so AI tools have been in use within Siemens CDA products for quite a while. The Caliber product line has been using this for ages. Good example is also our Solido product lines. And the experiences our customers have on that end are quite stunning in terms of the benefits they see, the speed ups they see um, through using those um, AI methodologies. There's a lot of dramatic speed up possible and a lot of simplification of the work um, that is required. So my last slide here, Siemens and RISC-V. Siemens is not a, a core IP vendor or a CPU IP vendor, 
So we consider ourselves as a trustworthy, independent voice to the RISC-V world. We look at RISC-V as a great opportunity with the flexibility that RISC-V provides, but everybody needs to be aware of the challenges that we see. From the design concept through the end product lifecycle, Siemens EDA has you covered, and as Callista has started with the keynote in the beginning in the morning, uh, please consider us as one of your trusted stakeholders that can make the difference for you with your Risk V design. With that, I'd like to thank you. And again, for those of you who are interested in this theoretical physicist joke, see me in the coffee break. Thank you. I'm on the mark. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you very much, Thomas.